Recently, I was asked by the Native Plant Society to give a presentation on permaculture. Native plants are really critical in a food forest, and so this is the presentation I gave, condensed. The original presentation was an hour, and this one's going to be done in about five minutes, less than about four minutes. So using plants in a food forest is second nature, but using natives is often something that people tend to overlook. So fruit trees, having an orchard, those things are given. But once you start introducing natives, well, now you can replace pesticides, herbicides. So 50 to 90 percent of our daily meals come from the food forest. And for us, this is really important for our quality of life, but also uh, essential in our homeschooling. So we were raising our son in the garden and we want to inspire others to do the same. So there are three categories of benefits when doing permaculture ecological restoration, year-round food sources, and free leisure. So my husband and I joke that the food forest has replaced our meal subscription program, our gym membership, reduced our grocery bill, and has eliminated the need for any marital therapy. But when you're creating a food forest, you are probably going to have a different process that feels good to you. Some people like to do it more of a sensory way where they're going about things more gradually. Others have more rigidity. And so sometimes people have an all or nothing thinking where they have to have all natives or only fruit trees. And you can really have a balance between the two by creating guilds. So what that means is you let your natives be the tier one of your food forest. And so by incorporating natives into the food forest, you're going to decrease your environmental impact. When you stop buying food from the grocery store, then you're not supporting a system that plows down native forests for roads or for factories. In current times, food insecurity has increased, especially among children. So having food in your yard is becoming even more essential. And throughout the world, there are those who have their backyard gardens and they are living longer than Americans, living longer than most people around them. They're going beyond the age of 100 disease free. And so what they're doing is they're growing the food in the backyard without pesticides and they're tending them and they're bringing them into the kitchen. So when you're selecting plants, you want to select those that you can bring into the kitchen, but you want it to be a simple process so that you are improving your health, not taxing your budget. So 20% of effort usually yields 80% of results, and that is the 80-20 principle that we really like to employ in our food forest. You choose which crops are going to yield the most food with the least effort, and then you choose the same natives. So Doug Tallamy will list in his book which plants have the greatest power to host native insects. And there are many that are edible. So oak, for example, has been a staple across the world and is still a very popular um, carb source in Korea. But you can plant things around the oaks like uh, ginger, cardamom, katuk. Um, you can also, around pine, plant things like pigeon pea. My pigeon pea and loves pine. Um, pineapple, for example, and so you can, oh, even my papaya, because it's high and dry right at the base of the pine. So you can start to create these companions. Red maple, our native red maple does yield sap. And so by trying to think about your food forest in ca three categories, macronutrients, micronutrients, and phytochemicals will enable you to live off your yard. And so something like sugar is more of a phytonutrient type thing. Elm trees have high edibility as well, and so they're an example of kind of like a, a seed. But things like beans, nuts, starchy tubers, healthy fats, cruciferous vegetables, those are the foundation of a healthy diet, according to the Blue Zones when you look at them. But we're all going to go about it a different way. So the most important thing is to have fun and to create a process that feels good to you. So for me, just going under an oak, it's nice and shady, is going to allow me to plant things that I can live off of, like pigeon pea, a chira, ibica, pumpkin, winged bean, red roselle, sweet potato. And then going into the second year, I can start to add banana, chaya, moringa, inca peanut, katuk. Don't forget star fruit. Star fruit, thank you. Jackfruit, mulberry, avocado, tropical almond, coconut, macadamia. By planting these staple crops first in guilds around your natives, then you're not going to have to fertilize pesticides or use any herbicides that are known carcinogens. And so that's an hour presentation in five minutes.